Hi everyone, Wonia Thibault of Buckskin Revolution and Alone Season 6 here. And I am revisiting a video that I promised to do when we first saw Jordan make the moose kill. So it seemed like there were a lot of people who were really excited about it, a lot of people who were really disturbed about it, and actually some folks who specifically wrote me because they saw my hunting ethics and the way that I showed so much respect over the animals that I was hunting in my segments and wanted to hear my opinions about Jordan's because it felt like it was in contrast. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and revisit, even though time has passed and we are further on with more different things than the moose kill, but I promised that I would do a talk about that and it still feels important to go back and do that. And also it brings up some pretty important issues in terms of hunting, wilderness living, and the meat industry in general. So let's talk about Jordan's moose kill. So again, I was reading some of the the various comments on the website and the YouTube channel and such and saw a lot of mixed reviews. So one thing is that there were some folks who it seemed like were really disturbed by how long it took and how long he let that animal slowly die. So I wanted to talk about that and the idea of what big game hunting really looks like and what suffering really looks like. Um, so Jordan put an arrow through that moose and the moose ran and then he looked at the blood trail and he saw bubbly bright red blood on the bushes. Now one of the things that is really indicative of where you hit an animal is the quality of the blood that you're seeing. Deep dark red blood is usually an organ shot. Bubbly blood is usually the lungs because it's got air in it, right? Really, really copious blood could indicate the heart. So those things are going to be really suggestive of how he should treat this situation. So what Jordan saw was the animal go and lie down not far from where he shot it. That is exactly what you want to see in an animal that has been mortally wounded. So the fact that he saw bubbly, bright red blood means that he knew that that was a lung shot. A lung shot is a fatal shot. That animal is going to die. A lot of people felt like he should have crept up on it and put another bullet through it to end its suffering. But here's the thing. A lot of what we think about when we think about an animal suffering is kind of an anthropomorphizing of that animal. So the truth is that we don't have a lot of nerves deep, deep in our body. And you hear this all the time about people who have been stabbed and don't even know that they've been stabbed until they look down and they see the blood. Or people who've been cut with very sharp knives or shot and it's like a dull thud and a dull, dull pain. So the truth is that we don't really even know what that moose was experiencing or what was going through its mind. And I think that a lot of us have the idea that a mortal shot is going to be very, very painful, and that that animal is sitting there suffering, knowing that its imminent de demise is coming. Chances are good that that was not a really, that that was a deep, dull pain for that moose. Usually when a, when a large game animal is shot, they will tend to go and find a quiet place to rest because they don't really know exactly what's happening, but they know that they feel a little off. It's not unusual to find them by water sources because they think, oh, I feel a little off. Maybe drinking something will help me feel better. So they go to the water's edge and die there, or they just aren't sure what's happening. So they're just going to rest a little while and wait till they feel better. The animal likely wasn't under a tremendous amount of stress. It likely had no idea that the pain it was experiencing had to do with that person that it maybe saw out of its peripheral vision quite some way from it, right? It probably didn't know that it had been shot. However, had he stalked up closer to this animal that was laying to rest to feel better, then that animal would have been very, very stressed out and it probably would have done everything it could to jump up and get away. It could definitely have caused great harm 
to Jordan, a wounded animal. As most folks know, approaching a wooden, wounded animal is a bad idea. And also the likelihood of that animal getting up and running away, making it way harder to find, was very high. Another issue that I feel like a lot of viewers aren't really thinking about when they're commenting on this is the fact that we had a limited range. If he spooked that animal out of his zone, he wasn't allowed to go and get it. So not only could going up closer to the animal, one, actually cause that animal stress and suffering that it might not be currently feeling, but it could also spook it, scare it away, stress it so that it was having to run when it didn't feel well and didn't feel like running and clearly wasn't choosing to run and really heighten the possibility that he wouldn't have found it. And that would have been a huge waste. As it was, he knew it was a fatal injury. He knew he had hit it in the lung. He knew that creature wasn't going anywhere. So sitting and waiting for it to die was absolutely the right choice. That's not to say that it was a great thing that it took that long to die. It would have been way better for everyone involved had it been a much quicker death. But he had no way of knowing that. What he knew was that it was a lung shot and that was fatal. And one would hope that that would be faster. That said, he didn't know. And this is where the anthropomorphizing comes in, is just that as humans, we create a lot of our own suffering by our mental processes around it. So stress is, can, can really cause suffering to an animal, but it's not gonna be fixating on its pain and its imminent death in the way a human would. So I really, I really believe that Jordan made the right choice and not going in for another shot and a kill. Um, let's see, I have, some, I have some notes here. So it seemed like some people took issue with just the fact that he was choosing to go after a big game animal, period. Like, like that wasn't an appropriate choice given the situation. I, I had one person say, well, yes, had it been a real survival situation, maybe, but this was a television show, so it wasn't a real survival situation. The whole idea of the show is that unless you, you know, see that button as an out, you're doing everything you can to survive for as long as possible. And the, and the tap button is just for emergency situations. So I experienced it as a survival situation. Now, of course, that's not technically true. I knew that there was an out. But that's saying that the only circumstances in which one should be hunting is in survival situations. And of course, a lot of people are hunting and moose hunting in all kinds of circumstances. Very, very few of those are actually survival situations. So what we were experiencing out there was much more of a survival situation than the average person who's out, out moose hunting. Similarly, with the idea that it was wasteful to take a big game animal and what he should have been doing was focusing on small game, feels to me like a really backwards argument because if you're someone who values life so much that you had a hard time with him killing a moose, then why would you want someone to have to kill far more animals in order to get equivalent amount of calories, right? That's saying that you value the life of a moose more than the life of, say, I mean, a hundred rabbits that would be equivalent or 200 fish. So who are we to judge what any given life is worth? Killing one moose is one death versus the amount of animals you would have to kill to make as many calories up would be, you know, tens and probably hundreds of other animals. So to my mind, it's much more respectful of life and much more humane to kill as few animals as you have to, to survive. Another important point is that the small game animals, and I can tell you this because I was eating them, have very, very little fat. And fat is 100% key to life out there. It's so important. That moose had so much more fat, which is huge in a survival situation or a long-term wilderness living situation. And you see Jordan bemoaning that when the wolverine steals his moose fat. Fat is like gold out there. So that's one reason why killing a big game animal was absolutely a really smart thing to do. I was out there really hoping to take a big game animal. So people who are like, well, Nia, you're clearly respectful. You know, don't you think it's horrible that he shot a moose? I was trying like heck to shoot a moose. 
I was making a birch bark moose call within the first couple days I was out there. I was standing in the woods for many, many hours calling moose the same way you saw Jordan doing it. I was trying like heck to draw moose into my area. It wasn't happening for me. I would have loved to be in Jordan's position and have a shot at a moose. I also heard someone talking about that he didn't have an adequate weapon and that's why it took it a long time to die. But archery hunting is a very legit form of hunt hunting and obviously it's people were doing it a long time before we had rifles. And Jordan had a 60 pound bow. The minimum bow required to legally hunt moose is a 45 pound bow. So his bow is actually far more powerful than the minimum requirement. And we all practiced on the range before going out and that man is an amazing shot. A lot of us out there were good shots for sure. I saw a lot of us, not everyone, but a lot of us practicing and Jordan to my mind was the best shot of any of us out there. So I have so much faith in his ability to put an arrow where he needed it. And that bow was absolutely powerful enough as evidenced by the fact that he got a long shot that killed that large animal with the bow. I feel like that's kind of enough said. Um, Let's see. Uh, also, another important point that I feel like really needs to be mentioned is some people are saying, oh, you know, like, well, just hunting is so gruesome and hunting causes a lot of suffering. It's not a good thing to be doing. And it was really hard to see. That's because most of us have the luxury, one, of getting all the calories we need fairly easily whenever we want them. That is a very, very different position to be in than we were out out there. And two, most people have the luxury of being very removed from the process of killing and butchering animals. It's a very intense process. And to my mind, it is a sacred responsibility to take the life of an animal that you intend to eat and to do it really well and with a lot of intention and respect. If you compare the taking of that moose to what the average animal goes through in a slaughterhouse, not even counting the killing, but looking at the life of animals that are raised for meat in the standard meat industry, that is the definition of suffering. Feedlots, so foul, so horrible for the animals. Or look at something like veal with little calves kept in tiny cages, not able to turn around so that their meat will be tender. That is suffering. That is inhumane. To my mind, hunting and hunting well is infinitely more humane and more respectful than buying meat from the standard grocery store. Yes, you don't have to be present for the somewhat messy project, you know, process of killing and butchering an animal. You get the luxury of being removed from it, but that doesn't mean that it is causing less suffering or that it's more respectful. So I am 100% in the belief that done well, respectfully and skillfully, hunting is far more humane than eating most domestic meat. Um, it's also much, much better for you. And if you think about it, think about living in the wild. Almost no moose die of old age, right? Moose are prey species. so. As a moose gets injured or older and slowing down or ill or any other thing that just affects its ability a little bit, that moose is very, very likely to be taken down by a pack of wolves. And if you think dying over three hours because of one arrow wound is a hard way to go, imagine being dragged down and consumed while you're still kicking by a pack full of ravening animals. So looking at the scale of suffering, being killed by an arrow wound over the course of a couple hours, I would think is probably a far less painful way to go than the way most wild animals go in the wild. So in that way too, again, I think that Jordan was totally humane in the way he chose to go about it. Um, I've also heard folks say, well, Jordan wasn't deeply grateful and didn't show respect to the animal. And I want to remind you that this show is edited, <laughs> right? You are seeing a teeny fraction of his entire experience. And I feel fortunate in that 
what they chose to edit of my hunting time was my deep respect and gratitude and that means a lot to me and I, that's very present with me when i am processing animals i think it would be hard to edit me so that that didn't come through that said we saw a couple minutes of jordan's several hour time while that moose was dying and again a couple minutes of the whole butchering process and i believe that he probably was very grateful and probably showed a lot of respect to that animal in the process but that just might not be what they chose to cut, you know, or, or what they chose to show and they cut the rest because they had to fit it into a show and they had already shown that with me. So maybe they wanted to show something different in the way they edited his. I don't know. There's no way for us to know, but I believe that Jordan had a lot of respect and intention and gratitude. And I know that he is a very knowledgeable, very capable, very skilled hunter. Full support of the choice to do it and the way he did it. Another point that I heard folks say is that it was wasteful of him to take a moose when he wasn't sure that he could preserve it. And I guess I just wanna say that I lived for, I have lived for many, many years uh, off grid where I have no refrigeration and no freezing and no standard ways that we're familiar with for preserving meat. And I was raising my own animals during that whole time and preserving the meat. So certainly it is very possible to preserve meat even at much warmer temperatures than we were experiencing it was cold out there people it was definitely refrigerator temperatures as and jordan was saying that it was refrigerator temperature but he would have preferred freezer temperature when a cow is killed in a slaughterhouse it is usually hung for a minimum of 10 days often longer than that in a refrigerator not a freezer cooled space so aging your meat in a cool space is a standard practice and it was very cold and only getting colder out there so he knew that that meat was going to be easy to preserve and certainly you saw him smoking it you saw all of the effort he went to to raise it away from predators so to my mind he wasn't being wasteful at all he was very responsible with that and he's lived in the wilderness long term and knows that he has the skills and the conditions for storing that meat and again i absolutely would have made the same choice and done everything i could to take big, big game and i know that i have the skills and the knowledge to make the best use of that meat and have it last long term especially as we're going into Arctic winter. I mean, truly. Likely some of the issues could be getting that meat into small enough pieces before it freezes solid. So I didn't see it as an issue. Um, another thing was, well, it's wasteful if he doesn't end up eating it all before he goes home. But Americans come up to Canada to do big game hunting regularly. It's kind of a thing, tourism hunting. I'm not, not saying that that's necessarily you know where i'm at or what i'm advocating here but people travel to hunt and take the meat back with them a lot so there's nothing to say that should the season be over before jordan finishes that meat he can't take it home and use it to feed his family for as long as it lasts so in that way to me there was nothing wasteful about his choice to take it so just reiterating a uh, shout out to jordan for a really skillful strategy in terms of his warning systems and in terms of containing the moose and taking the shot he did and getting the arrow through a lung which was where he wanted it and absolutely he made the right choice not to approach that wounded animal knowing that it had a fatal wound in the lung and one moose I believe is far more humane than killing a lot more animals to get that much food and it's better for you because it has a higher fat content which is key and he had the adequate tools we were not allowed to hunt without adequate tools we had a 45 pound minimum draw weight additionally I believe that hunting is far more ethical way of eating animals than encouraging the industrial agricultural practices of feedlots and keeping animals in horrible conditions such that they're hopped up on antibiotics and steroids and then killing them in rough ways and yeah the meat industry is not a beautiful thing and most people don't ever have to confront that so seeing an animal killed right in front of you is going to be a little hard for people who haven't seen it that doesn't make it wrong or bad um also 
what we think about an animal suffering may not be true of that actual animal's experience because deep wounds are less painful than surface wounds. Most of our nerve endings are on the surface of our bodies, not deep inside, so we have no way of knowing how much pain that moose was actually in. A lung shot probably wouldn't be deeply physically painful in an acute way. It would probably be a deep, dull ache that the moose likely didn't really understand, therefore didn't have the psychological trauma that a human would have in the same situation. So again, lots of points on why that was just uh, an awesome thing that Jordan did and uh, lots of great things to think about and conversations to have around it. But those are, those are some of my thoughts about it and chew on that and uh, yeah. Who knows what we will see? We will be seeing next out there. It's a very exciting and unprecedented season. So thank you all for watching. And as always, I appreciate your subscriptions. That really helps me out and your comments. And I'm doing my best to keep putting out good footage for you guys.